when uh, Sandy hit in terms of the storms search here it was uh, it was about one to two feet above the FEMA 100 year flood zone uh, and therefore it affected a lot more people than those that normally uh, get flood insurance including myself and uh, it created havoc in this little village which is a microcosm of course what happened in New York City but this uh, village Piemont is a disaster zone you can hear probably the machines in the background uh, we had the National Guard here to clean up the pier we uh, have a wonderful fire department that takes care of people pumped out all the houses and now we are on our hands and knees uh, to get the mud out of all the houses and the doors the armoires and the hutches it's a lot of work we had a pretty good model so within a few inches i knew where it would go and uh, my wife and me we simply uh, went to sleep uh, we did not experience the flood we got rattled in the house that was shaking from the winds but we slept through the flood and didn't go down until six or seven o'clock in the morning to look at the mess by then the water was gone of course or mostly gone because I had raised my house uh, in 2003 uh, and I wanted to raise it much more above the FEMA flood zone but interestingly enough I couldn't do that or I could have done it if I would have given up my third uh, attic floor because it has to have a minimum height of eight feet and uh, as I wanted to raise the house more to get way above the FEMA flood zone, I hit the zoning laws uh, which only allow 22 foot maximum height of houses in this particular neighborhood. We had thought in 2003 ahead of time once we knew that we couldn't raise the house anymore, but uh, so we did what we could. We lifted the dishwasher up on the, uh, on the kitchen counter, we raised the uh, kitchen stove as much as we physically could uh, all of course before the arrival of the storm but uh, it obviously was not enough uh, not that we would have raised it more we just didn't have the muscle power and the time and honestly not enough workhorses <laughs> to put all this stuff on it now so it's uh, it's a learning experience another interesting case is that uh, the village police and fire department recommend that we all bring our cars to a particular uh, lot but uh, I didn't know what its elevation was nor apparently did they because uh, both my cars my wife's car and mine car got flooded out way over the seat I'm a seismologist how in the heck did I ever get involved in this other mess well very simple. Uh, as a seismologist I was concerned about the consequences of earthquakes so in the 1990s we ran a five-year program with the help of FEMA in which we estimated what the consequences of an earthquake a major earthquake in New York City would be and it didn't look actually we just finished that study a few months before 9-11 and you could not talk after 9-11 about natural disasters but eventually the climate community took notice of those loss estimates that we had made for New York City and uh, they said oh can you do that for hurricanes and sea level rise and all those things that have to do with climate change and we said we don't know but we can try so we tried and unfortunately we had it right on the nose essentially the city uh, could have or not just the city there are other agencies like the MTA which is not a city agency or the uh, Port Authority of New York and New Jersey uh, they all did something but uh, obviously uh, not enough uh, 
to prevent uh, the tunnels to flood and that's not surprising because yeah, we were still in the study uh, uh, stage rather than in the action stage. So we have to spend engineering time, allow them to think about the best solutions and then discuss them in the public uh, which one we are willing to pay for because with enough money you can be as secure as you want but we're all short on money and therefore that is a trade-off cost versus benefits and we have to get to the bottom of that one hears and that has been going on for quite some time shouting matches between potential winners and potential losers and depending on which solutions is, you have different groupings of losers and winners. We have to overcome that dissent and work towards a consensus. We're all sitting in the same boat. There's clearly a political fallout from this event. Uh, the fallout should have occurred a year earlier when we had Irene uh, knocking at our door uh, and we missed the chance uh, to come together after that and really take actions. Certainly the victims of such events understand that sea level rise and climate change is a reality. Uh, it behooves the electorate to make a decision whether they want to have people in the government and therefore elect them that are climate deniers and we will continue to suffer the consequences. Uh, I wonder how long the, we as voters allow us to have representatives in the government that take threats of national importance not serious. I think it is inexcusable, it is irresponsible and it will have fatal and economic and livelihood consequences.